biggest singing superstars. Fronted by a star in her own right, Monique Luahati, a runner-up on The Voice of the Philippines and X Factor Philippines. Please direct your attention to the screens and we'll see what's coming your way. You knocked the living daylights out of me. You are one incredible young female singer.
we're very, very actually uh, excited to perform tonight because, you know, with all this COVID craziness, we weren't able to perform for more than a year. And right now, it just feels really, really great to be back and perform for all of you again. Right, guys? And I'm sure a lot of you here, or rather all of you here, are also excited to have fun tonight. Is that right? Now, why don't we introduce ourselves one by one? Hello, once again, my name is Monique. Hi, I'm Ronyel. My name is Paul. And I'm Joey. Hello, I'm Alex. Yep, and together we are called Goddess. And our show is consists of paying tribute to the goddesses of music. And of course, their biggest hits. Though we also do songs from male artists that y'all can enjoy. So yeah. And uh, by the way, we are all from the Philippines. Yeah. You know, a country made up of 7,107 islands. <laughs> but except for when it rains, because when it rains, we go down to, I think, 125. <laughs> It floods a lot in the Philippines. So if you guys are wondering why a lot of Filipinos are working out here on ships, it's because there's less chance we'll get drowned at sea. <laughs> anyway, both my parents were singers in a band when they met, but my mom stopped making music when I was born. So up till now, it's my dad that's continued singing to support my sisters and I. So music has been my bread and butter. I mean, like, ever since I was old enough to eat bread and butter. <laughs> and with my mom taking care of my sisters and I, she taught me many lessons through music. Like how to make the boys jump. And teach them just what we want. And most of all, what it's all about. Perspective. Here we go.
much. Well, my parents actually didn't want me to be a singer because they knew how difficult a life could be. But I begged my parents and my dad agreed to train me. And I'm surprised, he's like a sports coach. He made me run while I was singing for me to learn how to breathe properly. And he even told me that singing is not to impress, but to express. He's such a strict coach that once he made me spend two hours rehearsing the same opening line of this next song until he believed that I meant what I sang. And by that time, I did. <laughs>
things that us musicians agree upon. We constantly argue on what is good and what is bad music. But every musician I've ever met agrees that Stevie Wonder is a genius. In fact, he wrote, sang, and played every instrument on the recording for his number one hit. Let's go!
Factor. And to stand out in the competition, my mom suggested for me to sing an old song. Since all the other contestants were singing current pop hits, our new songs. And really, I must say, Mother Knows Best. Because this song became a very special song for me. Because this song took me to the finals. Judges with that song. But unfortunately, 
I lost the finals. It's because I didn't get enough texting votes or like viewers votes. But did I let that get me down? Of course. I cried in my room for a week. <laughs> but you know, I just have to think of my inspirations to keep me going. And every time I think of my inspirations, I think of two women. That's my mom, and of course, the amazing Miss Tina Turner. I could never forget the first time I saw my mom perform this song. I was only four then. One thing came into my mind. I want to sing this song. And when she showed me the video of Miss Tina Turner, I said, wow, I want to be like her. And yes, I'm going to be like her. Sing on a big stage like this. Performing in front of audience like you guys. <laughs> and of course, performing with a band as great as this guy's playing for me. Give it up. Well, it's like a dream come true. One, two, and we roll. Roll it. 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 Ro
Here's one of the songs that she sang in the movie The Bodyguard. Here's I Will Always Love You.
production team are led by Marina and our very own cruise director, Mr. Jan Wynn. Thank you very much. I'm so thankful for venues like this being around and of course for all of you guys who love and support it. Don't you think that's a cool thing? I do too. <laughs> On nights like this, sailing around the world, gliding along under the stars, kind of makes me want to dance with somebody. Here we go.
tomorrow night, if you more, come, come back next cruise. You might we might have a surprise for you in a couple days. Okay, you come to you come to the farewell show, then we'll talk. All right, all right, all right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, tomorrow we're going to be having a show at eight fifteen and ten thirty, featuring. An amazing entertainer by the name of David Klinkenberg right in here. Uh, tonight we have our second showing of Pixels Cabaret at 10.30. Tomorrow night there's two more performances of that show. And then a final performance on day number seven. So there's a couple opportunities for you to see that. We also have rock Rocky happening at 10 o'clock. It's starting up right now. It's in the music hall. And this is where you get to be the lead singer of the band. And the band is the Royal Swedes, and you would be the lead singer. It's a lot of fun. Come along for that. We have music all around the ship. A couple things about tomorrow. Are you excited about getting to the Dodge Glacier? Yeah. All right, well, let me give you a little bit of information, a little bit of a timeline. Now, we are going to be crossing the bar. Uh, that's what the end... <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be staying at the bar all night, aren't you? Uh, no, the bar is actually what they call the entrance into the Endicott Arm. It's called the bar. Uh, we estimate the time to cross the bar at 6 o'clock in the morning. Yay! So y'all can stay up all night long, right? No, okay. All right, now, after we cross the bar at approximately 6 a.m., it all depends on weather conditions. It's about 30 miles up to the Dawes Glacier. Now, generally speaking, they're estimating from the bridge the time that we're going to be around the glacier from 8 until 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, okay? Now, the captain will get as close as he can navigationally. He'll move as much as he can navigationally. It all depends on how many little icy bits there are and what the weather is like and what the conditions are. So, that's kind of a guideline for tomorrow. And just to let you know, I know I've told other people about this. Uh, going out at 10 a.m. at the Endicott Arm across that bar looks almost the same as crossing it at 6 a.m. if you catch my drift, all right? So that's the way that's going to happen tomorrow. It's a great uh, experience. It's beautiful, a big fjord with all the waterfalls coming down, and uh, we hope you enjoy it. But right now, it is time to enjoy something else. It's called Staggered Release. Yay! Oh, my favorite part. So right now, 